Okay, sorry about that. Um, I got cut off because I was at 15 minutes. So um, the free version of Screencast-O-Matic, it's a really great tool, um, but the free version only allows you to record 15 minutes. So sorry. sorry. Anyway, part two, moving on. Um, so now I'm just going to create these um, movable pieces that the students can drag and drop into the appropriate spaces. And basically all I'm going to do is um, make these for each value. So control C, control V, and then I'm just going to do that for each um, <clears throat> value. The fractional part is going to be a little bit different because you have to insert an equation. Um, insert equation. You just click it. You'll have this um, like a dashboard and you can just click fraction. I always choose this one where I can change the uh, numerator and denominator. The only thing that stinks, um, I haven't found a way to um, use a cute font because the font is actually what changes. So if you change it, it doesn't um, look right. So, uh, but now I'm just going to copy and paste the fraction and just add in my power of 10 on the bottom. And basically that's it. Um, it's gonna bother me that this is not in the middle, sorry. Uh, you can actually change the font so that it matches or you can keep it the same. I think in the student one that I've already created, um, I just kept it the same font throughout but anyway um, I'm just going to leave it for now and basically you don't want the students to be able to change the text um, in the text boxes so we're going to save each one as a picture so you would just highlight whatever you want to save um, for example this tens box I'm going to right click save as picture I'm going to save it in my file folder or else you'd be looking for them everywhere and just like I basically you see all these pictures here in my the thumbnails here um, those are all the pictures that I saved from the actual one that I created um, and then you're just going to save it as whatever you would like to title it I think I titled mine tens and I'll just call it tens too um, and then same thing for each one of these um, it seems like it's a uh, it's a little bit tedious. It really doesn't take that long, um, but you want to save them as PNGs. Save as picture. You will also have the option to save it as any of these other options, but I like the PNGs because it makes that background um, transparent, whereas if you were to save it as a JPEG, if you look at these thumbnails around where it's white, around the shape, that would actually stay white um, instead of just having the actual button itself. Um, so once you save all of them, um, you can duplicate the slide. So that way, in case you make a mistake, like I said, you can go back and edit it. But I'm going to just delete these on my second slide here, just like I did here. And then I'm going to reinsert them as pictures. So basically, Oh, uh, we also made a decimal. Sorry, I forgot to show you that one. That was just basically a circle shape that I filled in black. Super simple. Um, and I'm going to just select all of the files that I created. And you can insert them all at one time. You don't need to go back and insert all of them um, a trillion times. And I'm missing thousands and tens. Okay, so we're going to just insert all of them. Um, and they will insert a little bit bigger because when it saves it as a picture, it saves it just slightly bigger. Um, and I'm going to just reduce it just a little bit. 
Um, if you don't click anything, once they're all selected, you can just reduce the size all at one time. Um, and that's still a little bit too big. So I'm going to just reduce it a little bit more. It's actually better to save the picture bigger because the picture quality is saved as, uh, better. Um, so the larger you save the file, um, picture wise, you can resize it and the quality is better. Whereas if you save a small file and try and enlarge it in PowerPoint, it will um, reduce the quality of the photo. Um, if you have Photoshop you and all of that stuff, you don't have to worry about that, but I don't. So um, that's basically how I do it. And then um, I just make sure that everything kind of fits and if I need to change sizes and whatnot, then I will. Um, the next thing I do is basically save it how I want the students to see it. So I obviously don't want it all to be in order. Um, I want them to be able to use their brain and what they know and what we taught them to put it in order. So I'm not trying to put anything next to each other. And I have one, ten, hundred, thousand, tens, hundreds, thousands. Okay, and my decimal. So basically, this is what I want the file to look like for the student. So I'm going to save it. It's completed. I'm just going to call it a uh, place value chart two because I already made one. And I'm going to save this as a student copy. Um, just in case you want to upload it to Teachers Pay Teachers, this is actually not the file you upload to Teachers Pay Teachers. Um, but I can show you that another time. So um, this is basically done. It's ready for the student um, to be uploaded to Google Drive. So all you would now do is go to your Google Drive and um, I'll go back to my drive here. This is my drive. And I'm going to go to new. I'm going to do new file upload. And I'm going to place value chart. I did that again. There we go. And I'm going to upload that file. It's uploaded. Um, it uploaded as a PowerPoint file. You want in order for your students to access it, you need to make it a slide, a Google slide document. So you're just going to open it, like to view it. And don't worry about the fonts. Oops, we forgot to delete that first slide. Let's do that real quick. Sorry. <clears throat> delete. Okay, and we save. Sorry about that. Okay, now we'll go back. New file upload. I'm going to search for it again. There it is. Open. I'm going to open it. And this is what the file looks like. Um, the other good thing about saving as the pictures is you don't have to embed the fonts um, because it's saved as a picture. So you don't have to worry about the picture, the fonts or the cute fonts that you use um, not loading. Um, you're going to click open with Google Slides. It's automatically going to create a copy. Uh, your original is going to still be there, um, but it's going to make a copy of in the Google, sorry, Google Slides format. So um, see here we have the place value chart and then we have the place value chart again as a this little symbol. This would be Microsoft PowerPoint and this would be the slides version. So if I go back to my drive, here's my slides version and here's my PowerPoint version. You can leave both. Um, you obviously want to share the Google Slides one. And that's basically it. So now the students can drag and drop and they can move it. You don't have to worry about them changing the fonts. You can do this for Venn diagram, um, FSA prep for ELA as far as choosing the correct um, tense. Um, and things like that. So there are a lot of different options, but this is basically how you create something super simple. Sorry, it took a little bit longer than expected to um, explain. So 
hopefully you found it useful and you can go out there and create some other stuff. Okay, so for this next part, it is just a quick um, how you would upload something like this to Teachers Pay Teachers so that you can sell it. And basically what you would need to do is to, um, on your PowerPoint, um, I created a basic um, Google Drive template for anything that I sell that is Google Drive related. And it basically just gives the buyer some um, simple directions. All they're going to do is sign into their Google account. Um, they're going to click on the link below which you are going to provide them with, and then they are going to open it as a copy, which is super important because you don't want them to open it and start editing your original file. So basically, um, this is just a um, PowerPoint document that I created as a template, and then I just kind of go in and add my cute title page with my pictures of my product and blah, 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 blah. So um, I would suggest you do that that way because it's basically the same for each item that you would create for Google Drive. Um, but basically what you would need to do is insert a hyperlink, click here for our Google Drive notebook. I'm gonna right click, I'm actually gonna um, change this because this one is not a notebook activity. I'm just gonna do place value chart activity. Okay. I'm going to highlight it, right click, I'm going to hyperlink, and then I'm going to go back to my Google Drive. You need to share the document. Do not share the, uh, you don't want to share the document from the drive. So if you click here and you do get shareable link and you're in your drive, um, if you notice this says drive, that means you're sharing the link to your drive. You don't want to do that. You want to actually click on the item, open it, in the document, and if you look at your URL at the top, it should say docs, that's the link that you wanna share. So click share, and you're going to make sure that this says docs, not drive, and you're going to right click, copy, however you wanna copy, you click copy link, whatever. Go back down to your PowerPoint document, insert it, and here's the most important part. Um, at the very, very end of this link, um, there's this backslash here, edit, question mark, you need to change this edit to copy. And it needs to be lowercase. Um, copy, and then question mark. So you have your backslash, take out edit, replace it with copy, and then click OK. So now, um, double check it to make sure that the link actually works. If you right click, um, open hyperlink, it should take you to the copy um, this is what your buyer will see. So basically, based on your directions, it tells them sign in, click on the link below, they click, and this is what they are going to see. It will allow them to make a copy to their drive. They can edit it how they wish. Um, if you have that option, they can add whatever they'd like, text boxes, directions for their kids, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then they can go ahead and assign that through um, however they, whatever platform their school uses for us, we would use, um, Google Classroom. So, um, that is pretty much it. And, um, <clears throat> super simple, super easy. There are not a lot of digital resources out there. Um, I highly suggest you, um, check out a couple of the free resources that the, um, some of the sellers on Teachers Pay Teachers have. Um, I find them really helpful to kind of navigating. Um, I know that Stacy Knight has, Danielle, sorry, Danielle Knight has a really awesome Google um, resource how to, and uh, it's super helpful, but you also have to pay for it. So hope you like this video and hope it's super helpful. And that's about it. All right, see you later.